What is the name of the diagnosis with the classic triad of a low posterior neckline, a short neck with limited neck mobility? If you guess Klippel Field Syndrome, you would be correct. Yesterday, I presented a case of a 42-year-old man who came to my office complaining of chronic neck pain. He's had limited mobility of his neck for his entire life and has had worsening neck pain over the past several years. This is his neck x-ray. And the multiple fused vertebrae is classic finding in Klippel Fail Syndrome. Okay, doctor, you're going to have to explain that one. This is what a normal cervical spine x-ray looks like with each square right here representing a vertebral body in the spine. And it doesn't take a doctor to look at this x-ray and see that something is not quite right. What we're looking at on this patient's x-ray is multiply congenitally fused bones in this patient's neck. This is C3, 4, and 5 all fused together and C6 and C7 fused together. Here is his MRI of his cervical spine and we can appreciate that a little better with this being C3, C4, C5, a big disc space, C6, and C7. That's weird. Clipple Field Syndrome affects one in every 40,000 births, and it's slightly more common in females as compared to males. This happens during embryonic development between weeks three and eight, where there is faulty cervical spine segmentation, and that leads to bones in the neck becoming fused together instead of separating apart. You can imagine that if you're born with a fused spine, your neck range of motion is going to be limited. And because of this error in development, the patient often has a short neck and the hairline seems to be relatively low. Although I mentioned that triad at the beginning of the video only affects about 50% of patients with Klippel Fail Syndrome. So it can be missed and can be found later on in adulthood. Because of this error in development, Patients with Klippel Field Syndrome often have congenital stenosis, meaning they're born with a really naturally small canal where their spinal cord goes through, and that can lead to early myelopathy. Early what? Cervical myelopathy is a condition in the spine in which the spinal cord becomes compressed. So you can imagine if your spinal canal is naturally very small at birth, any little bone spur or issues with discs in your neck can lead it to become more compressed at an earlier age in life, like in our patient. He is 42 years old and already demonstrating signs of myelopathy or compression of his spinal cord. Signs of myelopathy or spinal cord compression includes weakness in the hands, trouble with balance, and hyperreflexia where you can have really brisk reflexes on clinical examination. You know, when the doctor takes the reflex hammer and taps your knee, Sometimes an extra little pep in your step is not a good thing. Really brisk reflexes sometimes are a sign of spinal compression. That's why we check those in the doctor's office. I mentioned that this is a genetic condition and most of the cases are sporadic. There are some that can be inherited through an autosomal dominant pattern on chromosomes 8 and 12, with the most common being an autosomal recessive on chromosome 17. Other associated conditions include scoliosis, like in our patient. 30% of them will have something called Sprinkles deformity where the scapula is elevated. It causes a cosmetic deformity as well as limitations in the range of motion of the shoulder. Other associated medical conditions include renal aplasia where one of the kidneys doesn't form correctly and that's in about 33% of patients. The bones in the ear can also ossify and cause sensory neural hearing loss and that's in 30% of patients. Congenital heart disease, such as ventral septal defects, is in about 15% of patients. We discussed earlier about congenital stenosis, and 50% of patients can also have atlantoaxial instability, where the upper cervical vertebral bones can become unstable. And almost all patients as they age will get something called adjacent segment disease. So in the areas where the spine is not fused, they'll have accelerated degeneration of those discs and that causes the neck pain. And in our patients led to his neck pain and myelopathy necessitating surgery. He essentially had extremely worn out discs in the segments of the spine that were not fused that was rubbing bone on bone and causing his chronic neck pain. But not only that, the degenerative disc disease was causing compression of his spinal cord and leading his hands to be weak and having balance troubles and trouble walking. And at 42 years old, that's a big problem to be dealing with. So he went on to needing spinal fusion surgery where we fused the bones in his spine that were not fused. That meant we fused C2, C3, and C5 and C6. 
I obtained flexion extension x-rays to rule out atlantoaxial instability, which fortunately he did not have. We performed a procedure called an anterior cervical discectomy infusion, which is an extremely common surgery in spine. We come through an incision on the front of the neck and we go into the spine and remove the disc that's compressing the spinal cord. And after the disc is removed, we replace it with bone graft and then place a plate and screws on top to stabilize that segment of the spine. And we did that at both segments in this patient's neck. The pros of this surgery is obviously he received significant improvement in the compression of his spinal cord and his symptoms of the weakness in his hands and trouble walking went away. But of course the cons is that the two discs in his neck that were moving no longer moved and essentially now almost his entire cervical spine is fused. It's important to recognize the diagnosis, to look for other associated health conditions, and to treat the appropriate symptoms. He's now well over a year out from surgery and has done great and has had complete restoration of his neurological function. And he's a happy patient with relief of his symptoms and more importantly, an explanation into why he's had all these symptoms his whole life that no one has been able to explain to him. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.